Hi folks and welcome to Masterclass. Today we're finally going to do the one you've been waiting for, how to change the bearings in your camper trailer. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll know that your bearings need servicing every 5,000 kilometres. So every 5,000 k's we pull them out, we have a look at them, clean them up, re-grease them and put them back in if they're in great condition. If they're not, shot them in the bin and put a new set in. Okay, so our bearing set consists of a seal. Now the seal pushes in after the bearings are in place. That keeps all the grease sealed inside. Seals around the stub axle and the hub itself. We have a cone. The cones are pressed in to the hub and then our bearing seats in on the cone. So you've got two perfectly machined surfaces, smooth, and our bearings spin and create very little heat if it's all done properly. For this exercise, we're simulating doing this on the side of the track with the tools you would have in your motor vehicle. And we're doing this because so many of you are naughty kids and don't swap out your bearings every 10,000 Ks. So, to remove the bearings and the cones, I've simply used a hammer and medium-sized screwdriver uh, and gently tapped out the bearings and the seal tapping around the perimeter and gently working them out of the hub. Now, that's probably gonna have taken you a while because you're on your way to the Cape, you've gone late in the season and it's 42 degrees. So you're gonna take your time and, and do this at a steady pace so you don't make mistakes. Now, for putting them back together, what you'll need is a socket or similar of around the same size as the cone. So we can now use this socket to tap our cone back into place. What you'll also need is grease. Blue high temp bearing grease, very important. Now if you're going to do this on the side of the track, you'll need to take the right tools. You'll need a small hammer, a screwdriver of course, bearing, spare bearing sets. Now a tip with these spare bearing sets, so you're not mucking around too much if you have to change these on the road pre-pack them with grease. So pack them with grease and seal them up in a zip tie bag before you leave, then there's a lot less mucking around, you'll do the job a lot quicker. So we're all ready with our parts and let's get going, get our grease ready. Beautiful blue grease, everyone loves blue grease. And what we'll do is lubricate the outside of our cone just so it makes it a lot easier to press in. Now if you're doing this at home, it's a lot easier. You can actually take the hub off your trailer, take it down to the workshop and get them to press out the old bearings and press the new bearings in for you. Saves a lot of headaches, it's a lot quicker. Like I said, we're, at the moment we're simulating doing this on the side of the track, so we don't have a press. Grab our socket. Grab our percussion instrument. start working the cone into the hub. So that's starting to work in. Grab a little bit bigger percussion instrument. And we've worked our cone in. Now here comes the fun part, packing the bearings. Now there is a, a method mechanics recommend and use as to grab some grease, get it on the palm of your hand. Now, on a bearing, there is a gap all around both sides, which is the widest gap on any part of the bearing. So to get our grease in there and make sure we force it in around all the rollers, what we're doing is pressing it in as such, getting pressure, pushing the grease in on the bearings. Now, as you do this, you'll see the grease squeeze in and start to expose itself out round the bearing. So because I've been clever, before I've left on my trip, these bearings are pre-packed. Now something, a little secret I'll let you in on MDC and the way we do th these things. In the factory we actually have a purpose-built machine to pack these bearings and it is an amazing bit of gear. It absolutely fills them and gets in every crevice inside the bearing housing. So we'll turn it over, squeeze in some more 
and not something you want to do if you don't like getting your hands dirty, that's for sure. But we certainly have got plenty of grease in there now. So I can drop that in the hub. Now what we want to do is pack some extra grease in there, get as much in on top of the bearing as we can. While you do this to try and not get any grease grubby fingerprints on the drum itself because you don't want any contamination on the linings or the drum because that'll affect your brake performance and which is not cool. Which also brings me to say, if you think you might have to do this on the tracks and you're prepared to do it, take a can of brake clean with you as well. So once you've done this, you can spray your hub, your linings, everything with some brake clean, make sure there's no grease oil or any contaminants on there and you won't get any bad smells and diminished performance from the brakes. Now it's time to press our seal in. Now you have to be careful with these, they are made of rubber so then not to be bashed around and, and massacred. So what we're going to do is we're going to place this in on top of the bearing and gently work it into place. You'll notice on the seal one side is hollowed out. Inside that hollow there is a lip with a spring in there which helps apply a little bit of pressure on the inside of the seal against the stub axle. On the other side it's flat so what you want to do is put it in flat side out so place it in there and we're very, very gently going to work it into place. I much prefer a rubber mallet for this. So we gently tap around the outsides of the seal. And there we go. Now that's in place. It's squeezed out a lot of grease, which is a good sign. It means we've got heaps packed in there behind it. Now, we flip our hub over and we repeat the process again on the other side. We'll grab our socket and begin the whole process again. Alright, now we've got our cone in, we can pack our other bearing, fill up the entire cavity as much as we can with grease and put our hub back on the vehicle. Alright, again, more of the fun bit. Some grease and pack it in. Now before we drop that in, grab some grease, get plenty in there, and drop our bearing in and liberally apply grease to the cavity between the two bearing sets. So the more you get in there, the better. If you get too much in there, it'll squeeze out when you put it into the stub axle. But if there's grease there, it means there's no air there. So now everything's packed and in place. There's miles and miles of grease in there. We can put our hub back on the stub axle. And remember, what we're gonna do is put the washer and the nut on and tighten it down so those bearings, the cones, everything click into place and all fits snug. Definitely parallel everything where it should be. So we tighten them up and you won't be able to turn the hub. Then we back off the nut. So back it off until the hub starts to turn freely, but there's no free play in there. And that's our bearing change done on the side of the tracks. But the important thing is, folks, remember, 
every 5,000 kilometres, get your bearing service, which is simple as taking them out, checking them, making sure everything's good, clean them out, repack them with quality grease, and away you go. Every 10,000 kilometres, take them out, replace them. If you're on a budget, you can keep those bearings as spares just in case the unthinkable happens and you do collapse a bearing out on the tracks or on the road. Uh, keep them as a spares, always travel with a spare set. And if you're looking at a major trip, if you're doing that, that big once a year or once every five year trip where you're doing thousands and thousands of kilometres, plan your trip that if you are doing 10,000 kilometres or more, somewhere along the way, you can get those bearings swapped out and change because you don't want to ruin a great trip by losing a wheel and destroying a stub axle out on the highway. If you're doing a lot of hardcore off-road, say you're heading up to Cape York and you're doing the telly track and you've got creek crossing after creek crossing after creek crossing. That's a lot of water. What you might want to do and should do is service your bearings every 2,500 kilometres just to make sure. Take them out, have a look and check they're okay because with boat trailers, we've always seen a boat trailer on the side of the road, the bearings collapse and the poor guy's waiting for a tow truck. Don't be that person. Do them every two and a half thousand kilometres and you shouldn't have a problem at all. So there you have it folks, a bearing change with a minimum of tools. Hopefully that information's enough to get you out of trouble when you are out on the tracks and the highway. For more great tips and tricks, follow us on Facebook or head over to our website and Follow our YouTube channel and you'll get each masterclass as it's released.